All right, this setting is pointless to talk about. When I post a photo like this on Instagram, one of the most common comments I get, bro, what are your settings? Settings? What settings is this? Why don't you post your settings? Well, I do have a really important reason I don't post my settings because to be completely honest, it's pointless to tell you my settings. What I am using for settings on a project may not work for you with what you are using on your machine. Settings are pretty subjective to what type of machine somebody's using, what type of material they're welding, all kinds of stuff like that plays a big part in deciding on your settings. So let's go over a setting. This is one that is completely subjective to the type of machine you are using. And this setting is balance. Balance is something that you can kind of see sometimes thrown around in comment sections. People say, oh, you need to set it like this, or no, you don't set it like that, set it like this. However, this is one thing about balance that makes it extremely difficult because this is simply one of the most subjective settings on your machine. This depends heavily on the type of welding that you're doing, on the amperage that you're using on your machine. The thickness of your plate material plays a big part in this as well. Even the configuration or type of joint you are doing. These are all a ton of variables that make it very specific to what you are doing with your project. So first off, if you don't know what balance is, it's all good, I got you. Let's go over it really quick here. When we are TIG welding aluminum, we are welding on the AC polarity. This is alternating current. So what this means, we are now alternating between the polarities of DC or direct current negative and DC positive. For a standard 60 Hertz that's powering a machine, your machine is gonna flip through this cycle 60 times per second. Inverter type machines can adjust the frequency that they run on. So for example, if somebody turns the frequency on their machine up to 120 Hertz, like you see me doing here on my can of weld machine, this AC cycle is now gonna happen 120 times per second. 120 Hertz, 120 times per second. You get the idea. Now, this is how balance works. What the balance setting is gonna do is it's gonna adjust the amount of positive side of the cycle and negative side of the cycle. So just for a rough example here, let's just exaggerate and say we're using a 50% setting. As you can probably imagine, this is gonna use 50% of each side of the cycle. 50% positive, 50% negative. While you would never probably use a 50-50 split, typically something that's commonly thrown around is a setting about 80-20. So that'll be 80% negative, 20% positive. Now, unfortunately, throwing around a blanket setting like this might work for a lot of people. Sometimes with a lot of different projects, this is not gonna work as well as it could as far as a balance setting. Now you can see with the machine I am using here, you can see this machine is set for approximately approximately 80% negative, 20% positive. Like I said, this may work fine in a lot of scenarios, but this may present some suboptimal performance with other situations. So when I'm welding on a project, I actually switch my balance all the time. For example, when I'm working with a really thin type of material, typically I'm working with a lower amperage setting. So when I'm doing this, I'm not gonna be welding with as much heat or amperage. So in this case, I'm actually gonna run a little bit more of the positive side of the cycle. I turn that up. You could say somewhere I'll end up being around 70% negative, 30% positive. In some cases, I might even bump this up to 65% and 35%. Crazy, right? What this is gonna do is run much more of the positive side of the cycle. It's gonna get me some much shinier stuff. And because I prefer welding aluminum with a small ball like you see here on the end of the tungsten, it keeps the end of the tungsten really clean and in good shape as well. While these settings may work great for thin material, as well as keep my tungsten in really good shape. For example, what if I need to grab my torch and do a, a fillet weld that's much hotter? Typically somebody is gonna turn up the amperage a little bit more or they're gonna dig in for a little more heat with the foot pedal. And this is where balance setting gets a little bit tricky. While the settings that we had may be working perfectly for lower amperage stuff, because we have a balance setting that has been set higher on the positive side of the cycle, somebody is gonna notice the tip of their tungsten begin to flutter and wobble around, it's super annoying. When this happens, obviously, this is gonna reduce the accuracy of your arc a lot. You're gonna notice the tip of the tungsten start to flutter, or shake around. So typically in this situation, when I wanna weld something like that, that's a little bit hotter, I'm gonna turn my positive side of the cycle down quite a bit. In this case, we're gonna have more negative side of the cycle. So like an 80% or 20% split, anytime I'm gonna be welding at a higher amperage and I'm gonna turn my positive side of the cycle down, the tungsten is gonna become more stable and you will not see it flutter around like this. It's gonna keep things much more stable and you're gonna find that your tungsten preparation is gonna last way longer. Balance is designed to do something really important for you. The positive side of the cycle is basically gonna clear oxide away from the welding area 
keeps it much cleaner and easier to weld. The negative side is what gets you more of a penetrating effect into the base material. This is the side of the cycle that essentially affects the base material. There's always gonna be different scenarios that call for different balance settings. When I'm working with my machines that I have here, I have a lot of these settings that I've pre-saved into memory banks on the machine. Some of these settings I'm gonna call up to use specifically for certain joints. This way I can always keep a consistent shape to my tungsten and I know exactly what my torch and tungsten is gonna be able to handle for what I'm welding. You now know a little bit about the difference between different joints and different scenarios. And the other thing that's important to take into consideration here is everybody's machine is gonna handle completely differently from one to the other. For example, when I was doing welding production for a really long time, I used this old transformer type machine. This thing's probably older than I am. This machine obviously is gonna have a balance setting that's gonna work completely differently to one of these new inverter type machines I have here. And even my inverter type machines I have here, one will work work slightly different than the other. Experiment for yourself and experiment for the gear that you are using. When you're working with something like this at low amperage, I encourage you to try running a little bit more of the positive side of the cycle. I think you'll definitely see the welding area will become a little bit cleaner, but you wanna watch for the point where your tungsten begins to flutter or misshape. This is gonna be the threshold where you find you are now running too much of the positive side of your cycle. The same goes for flipping it the other way on the negative side. When you start to see your work looking a little bit foggy or a little bit grainy or not as shiny, this is when we are now running not enough of the positive side of the cycle. This is a great way that you can find out what works best for you on your machine. And you can experiment with this setting in all different types of configurations that you do and different jobs you may come across. Try some thin stuff, prepare your tungsten just how you like it and find the thresholds of what worked best for you. The same goes for welding really, really hot stuff. Joints with a little bit more thickness to them or whatever. You can play with your settings and just be sure to make sure the tungsten remains stable. So we talked about preparing your tungsten. This is another subject that's extremely subjective. You're gonna get a lot of opinions from different people on this one. So I made this episode here. This episode here goes over what I prefer to use and why and some things that you can do to find out what will work best for you. Watch that episode next. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and chill. We'll talk soon. Peace.